So again, for those of you who just came in and didn't hear this, I'm passing around a flash drive that's got about 85 meg worth of stuff on it. Out of that 85 meg, <clears throat> well, it says 85 meg of it, but most of it is this PDF that I found. I've got this book right here that I'm going to start going through today. Murox MySQL 2nd Edition. All right, we're going to start going through that. We're not going to cover the whole book. That would be ridiculous. But the idea is we're going to go through a couple chapters. We're going to do some work. We're going to go through a couple more chapters. We're going to do some work, etc. I'm not sure exactly when, but somewhere around, you know, we've got about seven and a half weeks left. Somewhere around the halfway point, we're going to transition and we're going to leave this stuff. We're going to build our own database. And once we build our own database, we're going to go back to the C Sharp and we're going to write a program and try to bring all this stuff together. Does that make sense? If we can do that, that's going to be a success as far as I'm concerned. All right? And what I always try to do, just so you're aware of this, hopefully you are from last, those of you who were here last semester, but the last day that we have scheduled for a class in here, come on, to my knowledge at least, the semester ends, I think it's like Wednesday the 9th. That's your last day. So you will come in three week or three days that week. That Monday, that Tuesday, and that Wednesday, no lecture, no lab, no nothing. That's going to be time for you to work on your portfolio. All right? And I'm going to have to make sure for you two guys that I get you accounts and get you an example of, you know, to show you how to get started on your portfolio. But again, that's going to be worth either 5 or 10% of your grade. So even if you got an A going in here, I think it's 10%. If you don't do it, you know, you'd go down from an A to a B plus as an example. All right? All right, other stuff that's in here, just so you know it. Again, you may care about this, you may not care. And that's, that's fine either way. But... That's something we're going to do later. Let's see. Great. Now I just... Yeah. Okay. What I did about, I don't know what it was, somewhere around a year ago, is I created approximately 50 lectures on the stuff that we're going to be talking about now. Okay? So one of the things that I gave you was just a text file that has all this stuff. So as we go through it, if it doesn't make sense to you, or you think, you know, this is kind of cool. My guess is what typically happens when we go through this stuff is some people say, I like this a hell of a lot more than programming. Because it's very intuitive. The stuff we're going to start doing today already, you might find very intuitive. All right? Not only that, it is possible to, thank you. Everybody get a chance to copy this? This is a field, and I'm not just saying it, not right out of a two-year college, all right? But once you've got some experience, people who, who run databases for companies, database administrators, DBAs, typically starting salary is a minimum of 100 grand a year, all right? And many of them are closer to 250 grand a year. The bigger the company, the more money you'll get. You should all get that. All right, so what's in here that I just had you copy, all right? The first thing is, like I said, it's going to look really ugly, but I'm going to have to make it real small. Well, that's still ugly. But those are the 50 or so YouTube presentations that I've created. All right? So that's the first thing. The second thing that's in there, or we're going to start looking at this in just a minute, is I gave you a list of URLs. This is just a starting list that you might want to take a look at. Again, I'm not forcing you to do anything in here. And to be honest with you, as an instructor, one thing I hate is when students go, do we have to look at this? Do whatever the hell you want to do. All right? But especially if you're having problems understanding what we're going through, these are some resources that might help you. All right? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go through all these. This resource that's right here, that one, the one that's in blue, all right, that's the reference manual for MySQL, okay? That's the reference manual. This is a tutorial that the people who created MySQL have made. It's not good. It's not bad. It's okay. But I just wanted to put that there. What you might want to do, all of you, right this minute, is to go out to this site right here that's in blue and just look at what's out there. And again, all you need to pre probably put in is w3schools.com slash SQL, and that'll get you out there. All right? Now, I'm going to tell you something that may or may not make any sense to you whatsoever. All right? That particular tutorial is on SQL. SQL is an acronym that stands for Structured Query Language. My SQL is a type of SQL. Does that make sense? But this is a very generic tutorial. The thing about W3 schools that I like so much is what they always do is they always give you tons of examples. And they have like a try this type of thing in there. So again, as we're going through this, if it doesn't make sense to you, that's always a good place to go back and just take a look at what's in there. All right? All right. The next one that's in here, again, you don't have to go out to these, but I just want to show this to you. The next one that's out there, I've already got it open. We're going to go through this entire tutorial, not today, but very soon. We're going to go through everything that's in here. You're not going to have to, um, you're not going to have to hand anything in, but I want to go through it. And what I'm hoping for is that if you have questions as we're doing things, that you will ask. And I'll try to remember to keep asking. But if I ask and I say, are there any questions, and no one raises their hand, again, I have to suppose that what I'm going over makes sense to you. All right? This right here, this is the only YouTube thing I put out there. That's not mine. There's a guy, and I think I've, I've referenced him in class before. His name is Derek Bannis. He puts out tons of free IT videos information technology videos on everything. And he's got about a 40-minute thing on MySQL. And he, he claims, oh, I'm going to teach you 98% of what's in MySQL. I don't think so. Not in 40 minutes. He's good, but I don't think he's that good. All right. But, it, you know, I've looked at his other videos before. They're really good. This guy must sell ads out on YouTube. You know, we talked about that before with ads and stuff for YouTube. He must because he puts all this stuff out there for free. And I don't know how else he'd be making any money on it. This, if we start going through the stuff that's in here and you say, you know what, I don't like anything you've gone over. I don't like any of the examples that you've given us in class. None of them. Well, then this has got what, what this author considers to be the 50 top websites for learning MySQL. So if you're looking for even more, that's another site that you can go to. All right, again, do you have to? You don't have to do anything. All right. This is a PDF that's 100 pages right there, the one that's in blue. That's a 100-page PDF on MySQL from tutorialspoint.com. All right. These two are just both online tutorials, and they're both pretty good. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not an expert on MySQL, and I did a little bit of work this morning. I'm going to give you a handout later. It's just one page. We're going to play with it and try a few different things, okay? And I was thinking about this last night, all right? And so what I'm about to tell you, I don't know if this is right, wrong. We're going to find out, all right? The way I'm going to teach this to you is I'm first going to teach you the wrong way to do things. All right, not, we're not going to spend much time on the wrong way, but I want to show you the wrong way, and I want to show you why it's the wrong way. And we're going to do a bit of that stuff today. 
All right. And then the idea is we'll start learning the right way to do it. All right. The other thing, too, is when we first do this, this week, we're going to work from the command line. And you're going to think this is really a pain in the ass. And then starting next week, we'll work from a GUI tool. So if you give me the command line for a week, you get the GUI tool next week. And the reason I want to do with the command line for a few days is there are companies that have only the command line tools. So if you were to ever go to work for one of those companies, you would at least have been exposed to doing that. All right? All right. The other thing that I have, and I ripped this off from a book that I used to use, you've got this stuff too. This is the kind of stuff that we're going to do, just so you're aware of it. I don't expect it to make a hell of a lot of sense to you right now. This is going to come in and create a database. This is going to make the database active. Each one of these that says create table is going to create a new table to put in the database. So you notice there's about eight, ten tables. This is some other stuff. We'll go over it. And then this is how you put in the data. My goal in here is to minimize the amount of typing you have to do. This is not a program in data entry. You're not learning how to become administrative assistants. So my goal is to get us up and running and doing database stuff as soon as possible. All right? Okay. So with all that said, as kind of an intro, I'm going to jump into this. Okay? But we are going to get on the system and do a few things today. Now, if you look in here, in this book, this online book that I've just given you, there are a total of almost 600 pages, 590 pages it looks like, all right? So just about 600 pages. It would be, you know, in one month, even if you would be good enough to, to go over a 600-page book in a month, I'm not good enough to teach you that stuff. It just wouldn't work. So we're going to concentrate on, first, on these two sections. Today we're going to talk about an introduction to relational databases and SQL. We're going to skip that. We're not going to use MySQL Workbench. I'm going to give you what I consider to be a better software tool to use, a better GUI tool than that one. All right. But if later, if you go, you know what, I don't really like what we're using, I wish, you know, then you can go back and you can do this MySQL stuff on your own. The other thing I want you to realize is my hope is every day from now on for the next three, three and a half, whatever it is, weeks, I don't want to talk after 10 o'clock. Because I want to give you that last hour and a half to two hours to practice yourselves. That's how you're going to learn how to use this, is by going over a boatload of examples and trying different things. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to lock up the machine. Big deal. You close it down and you bring it back up again. You're not going to hurt anything. You're not going to hurt your machine by doing that. You're not. All right. I do it all the time. It's no big thing. All right. But in the next week or two, I want us to go over all five of these chapters. By the end of this week, we should be able to finish all five chapters. All right. Even only going a couple hours a day. And then, then uh, by the end of the week, I'm going to have a worksheet for you to work on. All right. And... That worksheet is worksheet rather is going to say, and I don't know, maybe we'll end up using this thing. I don't know. Run these queries. And I'm going to give you 25 or 30 queries. And you, you're, going to, you're going to sit there and you're going to do that, and it'll be on a Word document. Then you'll just copy the query, not the results. I don't want seven or 800 records. I just want the query. I said, how did you do this? I wrote this query. Boom. That's going to be it. All right. So we'll be doing a bunch of that stuff. All right. Then my hope is by next week we can get into this. This is harder. As you can guess, like with most books, the farther you get into it, the harder the stuff is. All right. And then we'll have another worksheet. Then we're going to come back in and we're going to say, okay, let's think about this. And, and just because I think at least it's the easiest way to do it, you all know how to use that payroll thing that we've been working on. Because we did how many payroll programs this semester? So we're going to create a payroll database. All right? We're going to create that. And my hope is then we're going to build a GUI for that. 
and it's going to allow us to insert data into the database using the GUI, change existing data in the database using the GUI, delete existing data in the database using the GUI, and view existing database data using the GUI. Does all that make sense? All right. That's the whole. If we can do that, I think at least for this class, I've done my job. It's also going to make it one hell of a lot easier for you for fall. All right. And I really wish that, that you know, I, I probably shouldn't say this because I'm taping, but I wish Rankin would change things. I wish that you two could take the follow-up class in fall, but you got to come back and take the earlier class. The reason for that is that it's going to be a long time until you actually, you know, after you take this class, till you get into the follow-up class. There's a lot of time to forget things during that, and I don't like that. I, you know, I, I've already asked. I said, let's, let's say Josh comes up to me and says, you know what, Jeff, I, you know, I, I've got plenty of time on my hands. Could I take both classes? Could I take your morning class and your afternoon class? Rankin doesn't let you do that. All right. And the reason they set it up with both classes in the first semester are mandatory before you can take the second, or both, both, both first year classes are mandatory before you can take the second year one. Now, if this summer, let's say that, that you or Devin, one of you guys, teaches yourself website design or knows website design, you can come in and try to test out of that class. And if you test out of it, you can go right into the next class. I don't know what the cost is to do that. You have to talk to Jeremy. All right. But Colin, one of my students um, who was in, with, with you guys last semester, Colin wanted to do that. Then he found out what was involved in the test. I wrote the hands-on part of the test, but then what they did was um, Evan over in St. Louis grabbed a bunch of questions from each chapter that's in the books that we use and made 130 multiple choice quests, 130 question multiple choice test. And you got to get 90 or more right. That's 70 percent. All right. So if you want to do that, then you got to go in and create a website. And if you think you could do that, you're more than welcome to try. All right. All right. So we're not going to cover in here sections four and five. We're not going to cover either one of those sections. There's not enough time. Those are very advanced topics. All right. I used to teach a class that was a whole semester long just on MySQL. That was half the class, this stuff. I mean, that was, you know, those classes like yours were like 16 or 17 weeks. So that was 40 days right there. All right. We just don't have the time to do that. All right. That said, I'm going to jump into this. I'm not going to go through the stuff that's in here, etc. Not going to go through the intro. But if you look, this is what we're kind of going to cover in section one. All right. So we're going to start right now. We're going to go through as much of chapter one as we can and then take a break. All right. So as it says, you'll understand some of the concepts and terms related to SQL and relational databases. Some of these I've already gone over with you last week. Went over on the left-hand side of the board. I put down, if you remember, this is a character, this is a field, this is a record, this is a table, this is a database. So some of it you've already heard. All right. That's why I think we can go over this quickly. All right. Then in Chapter 2, we're actually going to get in and start working with it. That's my goal, All right, is to start working with it today already. Now, some of you, when we go through this, weird stuff is going to happen. Jeff, I thought I typed this in right, but nothing at all is happening. All right. It, it's so easy with this software to make a, a very trivial mistake and have it where your machine locks up. So you've been told that. All right. Again, I can see Josh. I can see your machine. Ryan, I can see your machine. I can't see any of the other machines in here. So if something goes wrong, please raise your hand, all right, and just, just let me know because I'll come over there and the best I can try to help you with it. In the worst case scenario, if something really that bad happens, and hopefully you've all, all done this already or at least know what this is, if you do a Control-Alt-Delete, all right, and you come into Task Manager, in the worst case, that's everything that's running on my system right now. And in the worst case... If, for example, I didn't want this to run anymore, I could click on here 
And I could choose end task and boom, it would close. No matter how screwed up it is, it would close. All right. So let's go, go through chapter one. Like I said, we'll go into chapter two after the break. You'll notice that chapter three and chapter four are in chapter five are just they expand what's in chapters one and two. All right. There's going to be a couple times probably when, when one or more of you have questions and you go, what about this? And I don't want to put off your questions, but with some of them, the answer is going to be, we're going to cover that tomorrow. Does that make sense? All right. So chapter one, as you can see, again, I don't want to read to you, but you can see what's covered in here. It's kind of funny because the term client server, it, that, that term is not dead, but you don't hear that talked about very much anymore. And when you really talked about client servers, that was, you know, when, when the, in its heyday, that's when companies had mainframe computers that you hooked up to. And you still do, but today they're servers, and you don't hear that terminology as much as you used to. All right? But it is important that we go through the relational database model. Just so you know, again, you may or may not care. This relational database model that we're going to go through, this year it turns 48. And I'm asking you this question. So it was literally created back in 1970. How many things do you think in IT that were created back in 1970 are still used today with almost no changes to them? Because I'd say not very many. It's kind of neat when I could talk about software that's almost as old as I am, all right? But it's used, and it's pretty much used the same way that it was used back in the early 70s when it was created. You write queries the same way, etc. cetera, all right? Now, and I don't want to confuse you, but remember when I had you do that, uh, that install last week? We're going to uninstall it in just a few minutes because I've got a better way for you to get that stuff. And it's going to give you the GUI tools and everything else. All right, so we're going to uninstall that a little bit later today. All right, so we'll talk about an introduction to the relational database model. You know what? Again, I gave you, I think, enough history. I don't want to sit there and spend a lot of time and say, you know, back in this day, we had this version. You know, not to be funny, but who the hell cares? All right? It's come a long way. It's still used the same way, but it's come a long way over time. All right? I will give you this real quick. You may or may not care. MySQL was started probably around 20 to 25 years ago, and it was started as open source. Everybody know what open source is? Technically, it means no one owns it. All right? So if Tony goes, you know, he can literally download the binary so that, you know, the copy of the code and make changes to it. And then he could email MySQL, and if they liked his changes, they would add it to their code. And that worked fine for many, many years. But the people who owned MySQL, it's not that they got greedy, but let's face it, they're business people. They ended up selling it, and Oracle now owns it. Oracle is a relational database management system. MySQL, the good news is the majority of it is still free. So we can use it for free. That's the good news. The bad news is you can use it for free, but if you want any help from the MySQL people, then you have to pay money. All right? So that's the introduction and the comparison quickly. We are going to look at some statements that you can use. Some of these are going to be like, oh, that makes sense. Some of the rest of them, until we do them, you know, or even as we do them, you're going to be like, this just is weird. But the good news is, even if we have statements that don't make sense to you, once we start doing them and you look at the data, you'll, you'll probably be like, okay, I can see what you're doing. All right? So that's my hope, at least. All right. And then it ends talking about how to use SQL from an application program. The application program we're going to use is C Sharp. All right. And we're not going to be using MySQL with C Sharp. We're going to be using SQL Server. SQL Server is another relational database management system. 
It is very similar in many ways, all right, SQL Server to MySQL. All right. All right. So like I said, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about this. They show in here, this is a simple client server system. All right. That's it. Now, where they show this cloud in here, that pretty much is what the cloud is. If you don't know that, you know, people talk about saving stuff to the cloud. There is no magical cloud up there, but there are servers that you can save stuff to. All right. And that's pretty much what they are. Have you all heard of like, you know, I, I, I don't want to do, uh, demean you, but has everybody heard of things like Bitcoin? You know, the new stuff that's out. All right. And it's funny, I was watching a, a rerun, I didn't see it when it was live, but John Oliver, and the comedian, if you've never heard of him, he's on HBO and I really like the guy, but he was giving his own take on Bitcoin. And a lot of it was really, really true. A lot of these brand new companies, they're coming up and they have, uh, there's their startups. This one company made, in, in 30 minutes, made like $50 million. All right, and they're, what they're selling isn't even real. Because a lot of the stuff they're doing is cloud-based. All right, that's what a lot of Bitcoin is. But the difference is with many companies, even like Amazon. Amazon has what are called server farms. So they've got servers all over the world. That makes sense? I mean, let, let's face it. Why would you want a server in New York City to be serving people in China? That really wouldn't make a hell of a lot of sense. So they've got servers in China, for example. And if somebody goes and knocks down all their servers in New York, that's going to put them down for a while, but they can bounce right back up because they can use other servers in other places. All right. The thing with, with Bitcoin is they literally have servers all over the world. And their stuff, they don't, put a, they don't put all of anything on one server. They've got stuff on thousands of servers all over the place. So even if somebody brings down one of their servers, it's not going to disrupt them very much. All right. But what I'm trying to get to is if you look in here where it says client, that could be your machine. That could be one of these desktops in here. That could be your phone. That could be your tablet at home. It doesn't matter. All right. That's the client. What we're expecting here is you can't go directly to a server and get what you want. The server that you hit directly is not have the information you want. That server has to call another server. And that server has the database information on it that you need. All right? And if you've never heard this before, the most important resource for any company is its data. I don't care how important you are to a company. If you lose the data, you're in a hell of a lot of trouble, especially with a lot of these companies today that are doing everything electronically. Imagine a hospital that's getting all their payments electronically, all right, from insurance companies and whatever. Now imagine somebody goes in and hacks into that hospital and makes it seem like every single bill to any customer has been paid. All right. And if they haven't done a good job, and most hospitals do, of backing their stuff up, that could, that could create a hell of a lot of trouble. Does that make sense? You don't want that kind of stuff to happen. Your data is the most important resource. Just one last thing to get it you know, through even further. All right. You probably have all heard this, but Ryan Schaefer Cotter, the guy who's in here after me now, he's now gone. In fact, I think Friday he's heading out to LA for his new job. All right. But guess what? His classes didn't stop running. They had to do some maneuvering around, all right, but the classes are still going. But imagine that all the work that is done in that class, let's assume that it's on these machines. And now let's assume that all these machines are taken down and all that data is lost. That would be a lot bigger problem than Ryan leaving. All right, so what I'm, again, what I'm trying to just amplify is Data is the most important resource of any company, period. All right. There are a lot of different ways 
this is not a good picture because it says client software, server software, and the SQL interface. This is a bad picture because you as a user do not directly contact the database server. You contact a different server that contacts the database server. The reason for that is if you could directly contact the database server and you were a malicious person and were really you know, qualified as a hacker, you could bring that, that machine down. They don't want that to happen. All right. They've got some definitions in here. I don't think this is the time to go over that stuff. So here's the relational database model. Again, this model, the whole thing that we're doing is based off mathematical formula. This guy, Dr. E.F. Codd, he's the guy, basically, all right, that, that invented all this stuff. I don't know if any of you have watched it. I watched a little bit of it, but um, they've revamped and they're redoing American Idol, all right? So they got all new judges, et cetera, et cetera. What, what didn't change? They still have that little punk Ryan Seacrest out there, all right? Because from what I hear, he owns it. So they can't get rid of him, all right? Well, that's kind of how E.F. Codd is. He was the one who invented this. People have taken what he's done and stretched it to its limits and made it do things it wasn't originally designed to do. But it's all based off of the same model. And it's a model that uses tables. In fact, if you take a look at what's on the screen here, all right, this is the kind of stuff that you're going to be doing. Don't worry that some of these say different things. It's not a big thing. All right. This right here is a table. It's an example of a table. And that table has one, two, three, four, five, six fields in it. Does that make sense? Looking at those fields, you, you can hopefully notice there's a vendor ID that's different on every one of those records. All right. That would be the primary key. A primary key is a unique record identifier. So the way that each one of these is unique is by the number that's in there. All right? And you could, you know, I've given this lecture before where somebody will raise their hand and go, oh, kind of like a social security number. Kind of, but not at all. And what I mean is you're unique based on your social security number. You're also unique here based on your rank and ID number, right? But those are what are called intelligible fields. So in other words, if I get a hold of Tony's social security number, I could potentially wreak havoc in his life. Does that make sense? But if I get the fact that the Newbridge Book Club is vendor ID 5, there's probably not very much stuff I can do with it. So it's number 5, big deal. We're going to be creating for virtually every table we create a field that's either called just ID or something underscore ID, which is just going to be a number. And that's all it is. We're going to start doing that today. All right. And then we're going to see how we can make that easier. All right. And then when you look in here, virtually every single one of virtually every single one of the rest of the fields, they're all strings. I think you'd agree with that. All right. So the vendor name, the vendor address, one and two, the vendor city and the vendor state, they're all strings. Okay. But one thing I want to mention to you is, because there's a difference here, would you agree when you look at these states that each one of those states is two characters? Everybody agree with that? What you're going to learn starting today is when we create strings and databases, we make them either what are called var chars or we make them what are called chars. This, V-A-R, means variable length. You probably don't have two companies in here, two vendor names, that are exactly the same length. So we'd make those var chars. We'd make them variable length. These, we'd make char of size 2. That means that every one of these can be only two characters. Does that make sense? All right. This is all stuff that you're going to see because we're going to build a simple database after the break. All right. So again, I'm not going through everything that's in here. Some of this I've already, I've already talked about with you. All right. Eventually, what we want to get to is something that looks like this. And again, 
may not make a lot of sense right now. But we want to be able to have two tables at a minimum and relate those two tables together. And to do that, we have to establish what are called relationships. And there's three types of relationships. All right. And it, it's kind of symbolic to human life. If you're single your entire life, my brother's 66, never been married. All right. That's a one to one relationship, right? It's just him. All right. Uh, you can also have a one to many relationship. That's what we're going to strive for in here. Finally, you can have what's called a many to many relationship. And you've got to do special things when you have that. The point is, what I want you to understand is you see this field right here that we said is the primary key right there? That vendor ID? We take that field and we add it to this field. We add it from this table, we add it to this table. And we do that because now the two tables have a field in common. Does that make sense? And we can relate those tables by doing what's called a join and joining those two things together. All right, we may not get to that point today. We'll be doing joins already tomorrow. All right. So when you define a table, you know, these are different things that you do. Don't worry about what this looks like. What I'm more concerned with are these first two columns right here. All right. So notice we're saying the invoice ID is an int. You know what an int is. It's a whole number, right? It's an int of size 11. What does that mean? That means that the biggest number you can have in there is what? 99,999,999,999. If I did my math right, all right, that should be bigger than, you know, that as big as anything you ever need should be. All right. We could make it bigger if we wanted to or needed to. All right. So these two, first two fields are both that size. Then the invoice number you'll notice is of our chart. It's a variable length field up to size 50. Then we've got a field that's called invoice date. That's a date field. You're going to learn how to use all these things. <coughs> all right. Then you have three fields in a row that say decimal 92. Everybody see these right here? This means it can have the, at most nine digits. Nine digits. And two of them come after the decimal place. So that means what? That's the biggest number you can have in there. 9,999,999.99. Does that make sense? <clears throat> the good news is, you might think, do I have to memorize all this stuff? No, we're not having any tests in here. Right? I'm just trying to throw some theory at you before we go in and start doing the stuff after the break. So here are some of the common data types that you use. And again, you're going to use all of these at one time or another. All right. We're eventually going to create something that looks like this. This is called the database design diagram. It's also called an EER diagram. All right. And that's it. Basically, it's an entity relationship diagram. Don't worry about what it means because we'll we'll go on over it by that. The good news is that you're like, I, I'm not real artistic. I don't, what, with what I'm going to show you, once we create it, literally after we create our database, you click a button and it makes this for you. <coughs> literally, you click a button. That's it. You don't have to do anything. Else. All right, so there was that history. Again, I don't want to talk about history. Here is comparisons of a lot of the different things that are in here. All right. We're going to be using SQL Server. Why? Because we're using Visual Studio. And you all know this, Visual Studio is what? It's a Microsoft product, right? SQL Server, it works with more than just Windows. You can get it to work with other types of operating systems. But it works the best with Windows. Okay, with what we're going to be doing in fall next year, I'm going to bring databases in 
to the ASP.net class as soon as I possibly can. I'm hoping them by like week two or three. And we're going to be using SQL Server. We're going to be building our own database. <coughs> All right. So if you look up on the screen here, these are the things you're going to be working with. All right. We're going to be working with DML and DDL. DML allows you the, the M in the DML stands for data manipulation language. That's how you manipulate the data. The DDL, that D stands for definition. That's how you define the data. When you define the data, you are creating what's called the data's schema. So these are schema things. That's data stuff. All right. <clears throat> and oh, I show this to people. Well, most people think it's really dumb. But how do you remember these? This is how I remember it. S T U P I B. Stupid. All right, and I just changed the order. I put update before insert, okay? And these are real simple because it's CAD, C, A, D. So what we're going to do today, you're going to, you're going to do an example of each one of these today. All right, we're not going to do much today with the, uh, the schema stuff, but I want to get you working with the data right away. So you're going to do a select, you're going to do an insert, you're going to do an update, you're going to do a delete. We're going to do all that stuff today. So these are the kind of things that you're going to be writing. I don't expect them to make a lot of sense. After the break, I'm going to give you all a handout. It's just one page where we're going to put some stuff in. Again, we're not going to put it in the, quote, right way, unquote. We'll get into that stuff tomorrow. All right? But a lot of this in here, if you look at it, may not make any sense. That's to be expected. After we put a, a bunch of simple stuff in, I created a very simple database. I put you all in it. That's it. And then we'll add a few things to it. Okay? It's got your first name. It's got your last name. I didn't know if you wanted to go by Anthony or Tony, so I put Tony in. All right? And it's got uh, what? It's got your first name. It's got your last name, the, the uh, number for this course, and your grade. The good news is you all have eights. All right? So that... That's in there as eight records. And then we're going to go and add a couple more records of people who don't have eights. So we can go and start querying it and do some different stuff that's in here. All right, now we'll make some changes, etc. That's what we're going to do after the break. All right. Eventually, by the hopefully starting by you know in the middle to the end of this week, we're going to have two different tables. And we're going to combine information from those two tables together. When we do that, it's going to probably look a little different different to most of you, unless you've seen something like that before. But if you have not, it's going to look a little different, for lack of better words. All right? What we'll start doing today is we're going to add records, we're going to update records, we're going to delete records. We're going to do all three of those. All right? Those are data manipulation language, DML, statements. So you're going to talk today about the select, the insert, the update, and the delete. You may or may not have heard of this acronym before. Anybody heard of this? CRUD? Yes, no? CRUD is an acronym, and it stands for Create, Read, Update, Delete. What we're going to end up doing when we jump back into the C-sharp stuff is we're going to write a CRUD application all right, using SQL Server. So again, you're going to see examples of all of these. Now, if you look up on the screen here, everybody, just for a second, please. Uh, where is it? I have to grab it. Neither will we put it.
Well, what I want to show you, and I guess we're going to end up doing it all by hand, is this right here. Now, it doesn't, that doesn't mean anything to you, all right? But what I want to get across to you, because we're going to take a break in just a minute, is as we come through and start doing this, this language is freeform. Everybody hear what I just said? This language is freeform. You're going to end up, by the end of the period, writing statements that look like this. Select star from students where grade equal A. Something like that. Okay? What I'm telling you is when I write this stuff, when I write it, not you, when I write it, this word, this word, this word, right there, I'm going to make all of those capitalized. Because I take key words in the language and make them capitalized. You don't have to do that. If it's easier for you to make everything lowercase, then make everything lowercase. Does that make sense? The language doesn't care. I could have literally put select on one line, star on the next line, from on the next line, students on the next line, where on the next line, etc. So it's free form. You can hit enter at virtually every time. But if I was going to do this, let's just say that instead of A, we said we're grade equal A plus. Okay, I can't put in here double quote A, hit enter, and then on the next line put in plus like that. I can't do that. So there's very few rules. It's such a free form language. You're going to see that right away. So they have their own coding guidelines, and I pretty much follow what they say. So again, if you take a look in here, they're saying that's a, that's a difficult to read statement. This is the same statement right here where they've used some tabbing. You don't have to do that. But you should strive from the beginning to make this stuff as easy for you to understand as possible. In other words, you go and create your own standard. Well, I don't know what it is yet. Then try a few ways and see which one is the, you know, makes the most sense to you. And that's the, way, that's the one you should use. Now, if you look here, because it's a little weird, what are these? What are these? They're delimiters for what? What is that? Um, comment. What do we use for single line comment? Two dashes. Not anymore. It is literally now two dashes. Minus, minus. In this language, forward slash, forward slash means something else. Don't use that. All right, it actually turns off some system settings. You don't want to do that. So if you want to have a comment in here that's multi-line, do it the same way we've been doing it, or you can put minus, minus on each line. All right, just so you're aware of that. Finally, how to use SQL from an application program? We don't care for right now. All right. Notice C-sharp application using edo.net and a .net driver. We're going to do some of that stuff later on, all right? <coughs> Again, in this chapter two, it's on how to use MySQL Workbench. We're going to use a different product that's called PHP MyAdmin that I think is easier to use than MySQL Workbench, all right? So I'm not going to go through any of that stuff there. I'm not going to go through any of that stuff there. I'm going to right now, very quickly, jump up to page 64. It says how to use the manual. I already showed you where that manual was, correct? The newest version is 5.7, but when the book was written, it was 5.6, all right? If you go out there, you're going to get something that looks like this. And you can go search that for different things about MySQL. All right. How do you use the command line client? This is what we're going to be doing after the break. This is what you're going to have on your screen. Ugly as hell, but unbelievably functional. <coughs> there is a way to do it, too, if you'd rather have a white background and, and black text. I don't remember what it is, but you can reverse it. All right. You can look that up yourselves if you really want to. But this is what we're going to be doing after the break. We're going to be using the command line client probably for most of this week. 
so I can explain to you some of the stuff that this is all about. All right. Now, we're not going to do this today, but tomorrow I'm jumping right into chapter 3. Everybody hear that? All right. So it is 9 o'clock. Let's come back at 9.15. After we come back, we're going to uninstall the old package, install the one we're going to use, and I'm going to run you through some examples. So please come back at 9.15.